Cloth Lullaby, The Woven Life of Louise Bourgeois. Words by Amy Noveski, pictures by Isabel Arsenault. Louise was raised by a river. Her family lived in a big house on the water that wove like a wool thread through everything. The river's soil nurtured a garden where Louise and her family grew geraniums, peonies, asparagus, and cherry trees. Apples and pears, purple tamarisk, pink hawthorn, and sweet-smelling honeysuckle. Along its banks, her father planted poplars. Louise kept diaries of her days, and in a cloth tent pitched in the garden, she and her siblings would stay till the dark surprised them. The light from the house and the sound of a Verdi opera far away through the trees. Sometimes they'd spend the night and Louise would study the web of stars, imagine her place in the universe and weep, then fall asleep to the rhythmic rock and murmur of river water. The river provided flowers and fruit, a lullaby and a livelihood. Louise's family restored tapestries, art woven from wool, and the wool loved the tannin rich waters which cleansed and strengthened it and allowed it to soak up color. At the family's workshop, Louise's mother, like her mother before her, repaired fabric grown threadbare with time. She loved to work in the warm sun her needle rising and falling beside the lilting river, perfect, delicate spiderwebs glinting with caught drops of water above her. And then Louise was 12 years old. She learned the trade too, drawing in the missing fragments of a tapestry. It was often the bottoms of these fabric pictures that got the most wear and were in the most need of repair. And so Louise became adept at drawing feet drawing was like a thread in a spider's web. Among tapestries neatly stacked like books in a library, Louise's mother taught her daughter about form and color and the various styles of textiles. Some bore elaborate patterns, others told stories. She taught her daughter about the warp and the weft and how to weave the tools of their trade. She taught her how to dye. Purplish red was made from crushed cocknail bugs. Indigo and gold or yellow from plants. Black wool came straight from the backs of black sheep and that wool smelled. That's how you knew it was real. Louise's mother was her best friend. Deliberate, patient, soothing, Subtle, indispensable, and as useful as an aragni spider. Louise's father was not a restorer, but he appreciated fine things. He bought Louise beautiful clothes from Parisian department stores, but he was always leaving, which made Louise so mad, she threw herself into the river. He brought back cloth scraps from his travels and Louise's mother fixed them. Two halves of a cloth would find their way back together again. Rentrayage to reweave across the cut, to make whole. Louise followed the river to Paris where it flowed into the scene. Little did she know that one day soon her beloved river would be gone, filled in, flowing no longer with the waters the wool loved, but with cars on their way to the city. A memory. At the university, she studied mathematics. She liked subjects with stability and order, like geometry and cosmography. Stars were predictable. So too the sunrise, the setting of the moon. But she was deeply disappointed to learn that math, like life, is uncertain. While she was still a student, her mother died. Louise was heartbroken. She felt abandoned and all alone, a thread broken. 
She abandoned math and the stars and turned to paintings, applying the lessons she'd learned so far to art. The color blue pinches my heart. She drew, she painted, she wove, she missed her mother so much she sculpted giant spiders made of bronze, steel, and marble. She named Maimon. Her mother was not unlike a spider, a repairer of broken things. If you bash into the web of a spider, she doesn't get mad. She weaves and she repairs it. Louise gathered all the fabric of her life, all the dresses and the garments her father had bought her, all the bed linens, towels, tablecloths, her new husband's handkerchiefs, and she cut it all up. And then she spent the rest of her life putting it back together again. She sewed, she reworked, she stitched, she wove, she stuffed stockings to create cloth sculptures and figures a mother and a daughter. She sewed colorful spirals and circular webs, and she sewed smaller, sweeter spiders, one woven of soft colored ribbons, another of cloth, delicate metal. She made cloth drawings and cloth books, the blank pages, napkins from her wedding trousseau. She made books about the hours of the day and the dawn, the rising sun, and the stars she once loved. And because she did not want to forget a thing, she made a book about forgetting. Weaving was her way to make things whole. With the remaining fabric of her life, Louise wove together a cloth lullaby. She wove the river that raised her, maternal pinks, blues, and watery hues. She wove a mother sewing in the sun, a girl falling asleep beneath the stars, and everything she'd ever loved. When she was done, all of her spiders beside her, she held the river and let it rock her again. The end.